Hey guys, today we're back with another video about consistent hashing. Um, sorry for lying more than Bill Clinton about Monica Lewinsky in terms of me keeping saying that uh, I'm going to have Cassandra next, but I'm afraid you guys are going to have to wait two more videos longer to be introduced to my lovely lady Cassandra because uh, first I got to talk about consistent hashing and then I got to talk about gossip protocols, which are probably the last two pieces of the puzzle that um, are kind of prerequisites to understanding how Cassandra works. I don't really think it would be very fair of me if I was just like, oh yeah, so you know, uh, Cassandra does sharding using consistent hashing and then never bring it up in my channel because that's like exactly why I started this in the first place. It pisses me off that other channels do that. So um, I'm going to cover this. It's a really short video and uh, let's get through it and then get to the next one and then do Cassandra. All right, so consistent hashing, what is it? Um, in situations where you have to balance some sort of load between multiple nodes in a cluster, and in addition to balancing that load, want to generally keep it such that the majority of the items that have already been sent to given nodes in the cluster stay at those nodes when new nodes are added or removed from the cluster, consistent hashing is the algorithm for you. So I'm going to go ahead and explain that uh, later in this video. But what are the two cases where we see this being useful? Well, for starters, we've got sharding. Um, so, for example, anytime you're partitioning a data set, we want to make it such that you're not rebalancing a ton of the keys every single time you're adding or removing a node, because that would lead to network congestion. Um, and then another situation we see this is something like a load balancer, where a load balancer is directing traffic um, from clients to specific application servers. And then generally speaking, we want um, the same requests or similar requests to be going to the same servers simply so that we can cache certain previous uh, API calls or, or database calls, and that way um, just have better cache performance in general, more hits as opposed to misses. Okay, so let's do an overview of consistent hashing. So for starters, we're going to choose ourselves a hash function, and a hash function basically takes any input and uh, gives us an output for, our, uh, for some given range. And the entire point of a hash function is it's basically just a one-way function. From the output, you can't really get back the input, but that's kind of irrelevant here. So for the purposes of this video, let's imagine the hash function is only going to return the range 0 to 999. And then I'm going to put all those outputs on a ring. So after 999, you go right back to 0. So as you can see, we have the ring below in this image. So. Let's imagine we want to add some nodes to a cluster because we want to be able to load balance between them or, or use consistent hashing to um, you know, balance resources between all of these nodes. So in order to add nodes to this cluster, all we're going to do is perhaps use a second hash function or use even the original with something like the node ID or just even use a randomizer and then place it on the ring. And then for removing, we would go ahead and remove it from the ring. In reality, though, typically we don't just add one circle per node to the ring, but we add many circles. The reason we do this is so that um, if you were to just add one circle over the ring, that one circle uh, might be in like a very unique portion of the ring and you know uh, have no other nodes close to it. And as a result, it would take up a significant amount of the load and become a hotspot. So it's better to have multiple of these like virtual nodes, which are just you know copies of the circle that we place around the ring and that helps us to more evenly distribute the load per node. Okay, so uh, now as you can see, um, imagine I have nodes one, two, and three, and uh, I'm gonna say, okay, for each node, we're gonna put three copies of that node all over the ring, and now we have all these nodes distributed, hopefully relatively evenly throughout the ring. So what are we gonna do? Say um, we're using this for sharding, and I have the key Jordan, and we wanna determine where to place that key and value pair. First, all I'm going to do is take the hash of the key. So in this case, I'm saying the hash of Jordan is 261. So as you can see on the ring, 261 is a little bit after that 250 marker. And then all we're going to do is move clockwise around the ring until reaching one of the node circles and send it to that node. So pretty simple, moving clockwise, we first encounter node 3. We're just going to go ahead and say now that um, the key Jordan is going to reside on node 3. So as you can see, this is like a pretty relatively constant time operation in terms of figuring out where each key is going to be placed. And in addition to that, it should, assuming we have the right number of, say, like virtual nodes or just, you know, replicated circles per node here, um, it'll make sure that, generally speaking, the um, load balance is relatively even per node. Okay, simple enough. 
And then obviously if I were to remove a node, uh, since you're removing all of those uh, you know, virtual copies of it, then in theory even the rebalancing on a removal should be relatively even too. Okay, so like I said, super quick video, but the summary of consistent hashing is it's a good algorithm for distributing load evenly amongst nodes in a cluster and making sure that even on new membership or exits from that cluster, that the majority of the items are staying in the same place and only a few of them are going to be uh, rerouted to other nodes. Um, in terms of it being used in load balancers, this is a very popular algorithm. And I also discussed it a bit in terms of partitioning, and uh, it's especially prevalent in Cassandra, which I'll be covering in a couple videos, which is why I'm talking about it now. Um, so yeah, like I said, this one's pretty simple, and it should make a decent amount of sense, but consistent hashing is just a really good way to make sure that um, you can distribute things not just evenly, but also in a way that uh, they stay to relatively the same spot, even as the size and members of the cluster change. Okay, have a good one, guys.